Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson. Welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. In the next three tutorials, we're going to be talking about the cut tools in Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D Revision 18, the knife tool was changed into the line cut, loop cut and plane cut tools. And a whole bunch of new features were added. And I never really spent too much time looking at the new parameters when these tools changed. So recently I decided to spend a little bit of time exploring and reading the help files to see if there was anything about these tools that I could incorporate into my modeling workflow. So I thought it might be good just to record these tutorials to see if there's anything that you might not know that you can use as well. And also for any of you who've watched Making It Look Great 11, Modeling Tactics for Cinema 4D, treat this as an update because in that training, Toby Pittman used the knife tool and as I said, these features have changed somewhat. You might find reconciling between what Toby's demonstrating and the existing tools a little confusing. So hopefully this will demystify that for you as well. So let's start in this tutorial by looking at the line cut tool. I've got a simple scene here. I've got a plane, 10 by 10 plane that I've converted to polygons. I'm in edge mode. So to access the line cut tool, I'm going to press KK and let's just dig in and take a look at some of these features. Now one of the biggest changes between the knife tool in R18 and prior to that and the line cut tool is that with the line cut tool you can cut across polygons. So that was a really big change and uh, a very very welcome change. Just like that. That wasn't possible with the knife tool. Just grab that again and if I just click and just drag across here, you may notice the color on the points. They're red because they're sitting on an edge. Just click there. If I click on a vertex, that point will be green. If I click on a polygon, that point will be blue. And if I click off of an object, that point will be yellow. And I have to say that for me, it doesn't really matter what color these are. I can obviously see when I've clicked on a vertex or on an edge or on a polygon. So I didn't really even notice that these were differentiated by color um, and didn't really pay much attention to that. Okay, so let me just undo that and just grab that again. I'm just hitting the space bar just to drop that tool and bring it back. So if I click and you can see this is still a live cut. Look over here in the mode, I've got single line deselected. So I can click and create whatever shape that I want. One thing I didn't realize was that I can also interact with the cut that I've already created. I can click on there. Whoops, let me just try that again. Click, click, click. I can click on the line that exists and add a new point, just like that. If I hold down shift and click, that will constrain that point so I can slide it along that cut. And if I hold down control or command and click on that point, that will remove that. If I come to the end of the cut here, hold down shift and drag, you can see I can drag out that line in a straight section. If I hold down shift when I'm not clicking on the existing cut, I can constrain. You see I can constrain that cut and that angle depends on the angle set down here. So it's kind of like toggling on angle constraint which is really useful. So it really helps to know these shortcuts because they can be helpful depending on what kind of cut you're creating. And to accept that, I just hit the space bar and that drops that tool. That's a pretty ugly cut, isn't it? So a few shortcuts there. Let's take a look at some of the parameters. Most of these are pretty obvious. Visible only will cut only the visible polygons. Really, really important to have this turned on when you have any overlapping geometry. Notice though that when that's turned on, that slice mode becomes grayed out. And these are quite useful. The default is cut. I'd already changed that to split. And that will just give you a standard cut. So if I just cut that across there and just go into polygon mode, just fill that UF and just press E to get my move tool. 
you can see those polygons are still connected. Now if I change that to split and cut this, watch what happens. I'll just go uh, UL and just remove these. So that's actually split that off. So that's the same as using the UP shortcut. So that's built into the line cut tool. And there's also these handy ones here, remove part A or remove part B. So if I just cut this, that will remove part A. And you can tell what's going to happen if I remove part B, like that. Single line will just give you, as it says, a single line. If I click like that, and once I've clicked to create my second point, I no longer can continue on with that cut. I generally don't use single line because I don't find it quite as useful. It does give you an infinite cut option though. So what this will do is if I just create, uh, let's see, just a, I don't know, sphere, make that editable and just move that over here, for example. Uh, come back to, let's see, edge mode and KK. So I've got single line and infinite cut turned on. So if I just use single line, you can see I get basically an infinite cut. So I cut across all objects that are selected. I haven't selected the sphere, I need to select that first. Now I'll try again, and that should cut straight through that sphere as well, see? I'm not exactly sure how useful that is. I like to have a lot more control over what I'm doing, but you know, it's important to know what the features are. You never know when you might be able to find that handy. Restrict to selection is obvious, so that will only cut what is selected and not cut what is not selected. Very straightforward. Selecting cuts is interesting, especially with something like split mode turned on. So if I leave select cuts turned on, I'm going to turn these ones off. And let's see, just uh, make some cuts. Need to be in edge mode. Pretty ugly cut there, but you can see if I hit the space bar, then those edges are still selected. And remember, I'm in split mode, so it's got the edges selected for the inside area and the outside. So if I just control drag that down, you can see I've made an extrusion there. It's not obvious what's happening yet, but if I just drop that plane into a subdivision surface, you can see that you could use this technique to create panels. Um, in this case, it's not as useful because you can see the outside corners need some control cuts. But that's just interesting to know that you can do that all in one move. Like, like I said before, I tend to like more control. And so I plan that kind of thing out a little more before I start splitting out my objects. But it's good to know that that's, um, that's an option. So just undo that. Connect cut edges, I leave on by default. If I turn that off, then I can make a cut, but that will just make the points. If I just go into edge mode, into point mode, sorry, you can see that doesn't connect those points. Turn that back on, and it does connect them. Preserve Ngon curvature. Uh, generally, I don't work with Ngons, um, especially Ngons on curvature. So I don't really use this feature. You can check out the help menu to get more information about that. Auto snap, I always leave turned on. And we saw before holding down the shift key will, will allow you to have angle constrain, but you can also force this on. So that when I click, I can constrain that. And that can be really helpful. Okay, now the last thing I wanna show you, let me just, undo all of these. Let me just turn on this spline here. I've just got a star. Now I can use this spline to project a cut onto the plane. I'll show you what I mean. 
So with the plane selected, if I press KK, hold down Control or Command, you can see if I move over the spline, it becomes active. Click on that spline, and you can see I projected a cut into the object that's selected. And you can see it's based on the camera angle. So if I need it to be directly on top, just go into top view, hold down control. Remember, I've got the object selected that I want to cut, not the actual spline. Hold down control or command, click, and you can project that cut onto the object. And that's really useful. Obviously, it's not going to give you ideal topology, depending on what you're doing. You see, I've got a triangle here and an end on. But still, very, very handy for cutting in maybe a logo or something a little more complex. And then you might need to go in and do a little bit of cleanup, but still a great time saver. So that's the line cut tool. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at loop cut.